Hi everyone. Welcome to our ECG interpretation video. As you know, the NCLEX RN exam is a crucial step in your journey to becoming a registered nurse. And one of the most important topics you need to master in order to excel on the exam is ECG interpretation. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into ECG interpretation with questions, answers, and explanations that will help you prepare for the NCLEX RN exam. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a solid understanding of ECG interpretation. It's not only a key component of the NCLEX RN exam, but it's also a critical skill for providing safe and effective care to your patients. So I encourage you to go through each question carefully and take your time to understand the concepts. And if at any point you find yourself feeling confused or unsure, I invite you to take advantage of our free NCLEX RN Fast Track practice course. The link to this course is available in the description below. By the end of this video, I'm confident that you'll have a better understanding of ECG interpretation, and you'll be well on your way to successfully passing the NCLEX RN exam. So, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and let's get started. A EKG strip of client shows following reading. Which of the following is true regarding this condition? It could be better with defibrillation. This is a systole. The QRS complex is weak and not rhythmic. The heart rate is very low in this condition. I will give you some time to go through these options. Okay. Let me reveal the answer. The correct answer to this question is this a systole ECG. Third option is not correct. The P wave and QRS complex are totally absent in a systole. Fourth option is incorrect. The rate is zero. A registered nurse at critical care division is assessing an electrocardiogram rhythm strip. She observes the following reading. What can she infer from these readings? Your options are, this is a normal sinus rhythm. There is a problem with rhythmic contraction of ventricles. The PR interval is not normal. The QRS interval is not within the requirement for normal sinus rhythm. As I told earlier, you can pause the video now. All right. I hope you got the answer right. The first option is correct answer here. The conditions for normal sinus rhythm are P width before each QRS should be between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. QRS interval is 0.04 to 0.12 seconds. QT interval should be less than 0.4 seconds. Since all the parameters given obeys all the acceptance criteria for normal sinus rhythm, it is a normal sinus rhythm. All right. Good job if you got that right. Let us go to the second question. Can you identify the criteria for which the following diagram doesn't obey the normal sinus rhythm from this ECG strip? The wave's interval are not regular. The amplitude of the wave varies. The QRS interval is out of shape. The P wave is missing at some places. Your time starts now. All right, let me reveal the answer. The correct answer to this question is the intervals are not regular. This is quite obvious from the diagram too. A client is complaining of dizziness and has shortness of breath. She shows heart rate of 4 to 2 beats per minute and upon observation of the BP, it is clear that she has a hypotension with a reading of 8 to 5 and 5 to 5. Which of the following could be the causes of this problem? Her blood glucose level of 100. She is prescribed atropine. She could be suffering from some viral ever. She is prescribed digoxin. I will give you some time to look for the answer to this problem too.
All right. Let me reveal the answer to you. The correct answer to this question is the last option that is, she is prescribed with Digoxin. We learned that certain drugs such as Digoxin causes bradycardia and these all symptoms that she is showing such as dizziness, shortness of breath, and hypotension are the symptoms of bradycardia. Next question for your practice. A patient is feeling weak, lethargic, and dizzy. Look at the following ECG strip reading. What problem can you identify with this reading? PR interval is 0.18 seconds. QRS interval is 0.06 seconds. QT interval is 0.2 seconds. Heart rate is 50 BPM. BP is 80 by 60. Your options are, she has a normal sinus but low pressure. Second option. She has bradycardia. Third. She has tachycardia and the last one. She could have some heart blockade. Take your own time to answer this question. All right, let me reveal the answer to you. The correct answer to this question is, she has bradycardia. She shows the symptoms of bradycardia and her vital ECG details also matches to that of bradycardia. Which of the following could be nursing intervention for the patients with MI? Administer morphine. Administer supplemental oxygen. Sedate the patient. See ECG findings to help to identify and locate the positioning. Well, there are three correct answers here. First, second, and last. I hope you got that right. Which of the following ECG reading is of myocardial infarction? Yes, you are right. You clearly see the elevated ST segment in this EKG strip which shows myocardial infarction. Which of the following EKG strip shows the atrial fibrillation? The first strip is for normal sinus. The second for sinus tachycardia. The third is for supraventricular tachycardia and the correct answer is the last option. We know that supraventricular tachycardia has normal rhythm and supraventricular tachycardia shows frequent QRS complex. So you won't see much any other waves in between these QRS complex in supraventricular tachycardia. In which of the following conditions is the P wave absent? The options are, first, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, bradycardia, atrial flutter, The correct answer to this question is atrial fibrillation. Options tachycardia and bradycardia are not correct nor is atrial flutter. In atrial flutter, in fact, we see multiple P waves in between each QRS complex. Which of the conditions can you infer from the following EKG strips? First strip for you, what can you infer from this diagram? This is an atrial fibrillation. As we see, the P wave is absent. The rhythm is irregular and frequent in atrial fibrillation. You should see multiple small blunt waves and also as we discussed, these wave patterns are very irregular. This could be normal sinus. There is normal P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. Also, we are given normal heart rate of 75 BPM which is between the resting heart rate of 60 to 100 BPM. This is a systole, there is not any electrical activity or any wave patterns in EKG strip. 
This is atrial flutter. As we discussed, this can be identified with identifiers such as extremely high heart rate between 250-350 beats per minute. The rate is regular. The P waves are well defined and shows a sawtooth pattern. Well, we have discussed a lot of things with these diagram. You are doing a great job and a good progress. Keep it on. You are given with four types of heart blocks in EKG strip. Your job is to identify the type of heart block. This is grade 2 type 1 heart block. In this EKG strip, we can see progressive increase in PR interval. This is type 1 of E block. We can see that the PR interval is constant but wider. This is grade 2 type 2 heart block. We are seeing two normal PR and then the P wave is not followed by QRS complex. This is grade 3 heart block. P wave is multiple and few QRS complex. There is a complete dissociation or no relation between occurrence of P wave and QRS complex. The nurse notices some symptoms of supraventricular tachycardia, such as sudden drop in BP to the level of 65 to 40 and feeling dizziness with a heart rate of 220 beats per minute. What should the nurse do as a management approach? Your options are, administer beta blocker, administer atropine, administer epinephrine, administer adenosine, your time starts. Options 1 is incorrect as beta blockers can further decrease the blood pressure. The patient is already suffering from hypotension. Second option, atropine is also not correct as it can increase the heart rate. The heart rate is already very high and may lead to heart failure. Option 3, that is epinephrine is also out of box as there is no use of it and it further increase the heart rate. The last option that is administration of adenosine is correct one. Adenosine is given in rapid intravenous bolus injection into a vein or into an IV line. When given as a rapid IV bolus, adenosine slows cardiac conduction, particularly affecting conduction through the IV node. With this, we have covered this topic too. Remember to watch out for two frequent QRS complexes with P wave completely absent or masked by T waves in the EKG strip to identify the supraventricular tachycardia with underlying symptoms such as very high heart rate and low BP and dizziness in patients.